Welcome to the Making a Multi-Million Dollar Med Spa podcast, where we dive into the art and science of building a thriving med spa. I'm your host, Kat Toronto. In this podcast, we're all about empowering medical professionals and entrepreneurs like you with the knowledge, tools, and inspiration needed to elevate your practice to new heights. Whether you're just starting your journey or you're a seasoned expert looking to expand, this is the place where the industry's brightest minds come together to share their secrets to success. So sit back, relax, and get ready to unlock the potential of your med spa with the Making a Multi-Million Dollar Med Spa podcast. Let's go on this journey together, one success story at a time. Before we get into today's episode, I want to talk about Mint's Clinics to Watch initiative. As we continue to train and grow, we've noticed how many amazing dedicated clinics there are across the industry. Since we are a training company and centered around the ideal of empowering and building the world of aesthetics, we have launched the Clinics to Watch program. That said, the clinic that has been selected as the first ever winner of Mint Aesthetics Clinic to Watch for January 2024, drumroll please, is Coach Light West Des Moines. Coach Light was nominated for several reasons, including their outstanding team, exceptional patient care, an innovative outlook, and a true commitment to providing ongoing training and education to their team. I mean, how amazing do they sound? In 2023, they had three of their own providers in the top 10 providers for the Cosmetic Physician Partners Group. This is a group of over 30 clinics from coast to coast, including cities in California, Dallas, Texas, Colorado, and yes, right here in Kansas City. And out of the top 10 providers from coast to coast, three of them came from Des Moines. I mean, that is just amazing. And I think that success likely goes hand in hand with their outlook of management. It is all centered on the support of their team. As individuals, they are centered on values that include family, authenticity, relationships, growth, balance, and fun. But those individuals come together to earn recognitions like Best Local Med Spa and Number One in Iowa for Cool Sculpting Botox. Now the first ever clinic to watch, they prioritize sporting their team, and it's clear the philosophy is paying off. Now, I might be biased as the owner of an aesthetic training company, but I believe their excellence is also reflected in the ongoing education as well. Speaking from direct experience, Coach Light has participated in three separate training events in 2023 alone, which would be over 30 hours of focused training, and that's multiple attendees from their own clinic at each event. Not to mention, they've been an e-course subscriber for two years. We can see their team completing courses, passing quizzes, and growing all the while. I actually had an opportunity last year to have the director of Coach Light, Brenda Bodenkamp, on the podcast, and she just blows me away. It was so clear that her team was so important to her, which is why we now see how that's reflected in their success. Which, by the way, if you want to listen to that episode, episode 17, The Journey of Growth and Success in the Clinic, I personally love that episode. I could go on and on about this clinic and the really amazing things that they are doing, but I know we have an episode to get to. If you want to learn more about Coach Light or follow along with their success, you can find them at dsmcoachlight.com or Instagram at coachlightdsm. Be sure to congratulate them on their hard work as a team. They really are wonderful people and a role model of a team. Also, if you know a clinic, provider, doctor, or even a treatment that's doing really awesome things, you can nominate them at the link below. We really want to spotlight those who have done great things and share with the industry. Congratulations, Coach Light West Des Moines. We are truly honored to know you. We are so proud of you and can't wait to watch your team continue to shine. All right, now let's get on to the episode. Welcome back. I'm Kat Toronto. I'm so excited to do this podcast today. I'm going to dive back into my own story and share a little bit about Mint Aesthetics and where we've been and where we're going. And in preparing for today, I thought, you know, I'm going to share a little bit about myself and my own journey. We've got a lot of new listeners out there and I thought, you know, hey, maybe a little intro. It's time for a little intro. Um, So in journaling and putting together today's podcast, I just revisited my own personal purpose. And I think, you know, so often, um, or for many years, I, I would have a purpose, but I never wrote it down. I never 
revisited it. It was like I would set my goals for the year, set my goals for the day, for that moment, but I didn't have one purpose that was written down that I could share with anyone at any time. And so if you haven't done that, I I hope that that you'll sit down and do it. Make it something simple, something that you could, you don't have to take hours to memorize or minutes to memorize, something that just comes out. And so my personal purpose is to be a magical force, to enjoy every moment of every day and to inspire the magic in others. And so when I step back and kind of explain that, what what that means to me and to you, um, one, I want to define what magic means to me because it's a word, you know, I'm not talking about Harry Potter magic. I'm talking about sharing knowledge, sharing courage, sharing passion to develop and to go after what you want in life. And so I want to be that force. I want to inspire that in others. And then the other piece to it is to enjoy all the moments in life because, you know, I've been through some difficult ones. I'm sure all of you have as well. You know, I lost my mother to a very horrible type of cancer in my teenage years. You know, I lost my first husband to suicide um, in my mid-30s. And while all of these things, amongst many others, were so difficult, you know, it's really it's really easy to get stuck in the why me and, and um, the sadness of all of those things. And so I want to find ways, maybe not to enjoy all those things, but to learn from those things. And I think that's really important too when we look at our own businesses and our personal life, but let's talk about business today, that we're going to have setbacks. We're going to have struggles. We're going to find things that we do not know how to do. And um, I think if we can we can step back and say, you know, how can I learn from this moment? How can I find some sort of joy if that's possible in this moment? Um, it really helps to open the mind, open the heart, and and find that way to get through it so we can look back on it and say you know what that was hard but I did it and I got through that if I can do that I can take on the world and um and so that is my purpose and I hope that you've you've will sit down and write yours if you haven't already done that it really helps to to drive my day drive my year drive my energy in this life and really to enjoy it because isn't that what life's about is is finding the joy so yesterday I had a, a great chat with Dr. Jay Burns as we looked at mint aesthetics and what the plan is for this year and really also looking back at 2023 and how we did how we grew um and a big focus this year, not only at Mint, but also at Aesthetic Care, is culture. And, you know, if, if you've heard me talk, if you've heard Matt talk, my business partner and spouse, you know, we, we oftentimes we're talking about our culture. You know, our number one focus as business owners is our team. Um, love the book, Customer Comes Second. It's all about taking care of your team, creating a culture that your team loves, creating an environment that your team loves. And I'm always the first to say like, hey, I'm not going to always get that right, but I can promise you I'm always thinking about it. And so we were talking about culture and how, you know, one bad apple can really ruin the bunch, which is, you know, pretty obvious, but that sometimes the bad apple is the business owner. And, you know, I, um, it, it, forced me to stop and reflect on myself and to look at, you know, how, how have I been that bad apple? And, or also thinking about um, just aha moments in life. And I think so often, if you are in that moment of creating that anxiety for yourself and for your team, no matter your role within the team or the stress with the team or the ugliness in the team, you know, if you could step back and look for an aha, aha moment, which I'm going to share here in a minute, in yourself, it might get you to change some things. And so I thought I would share some of my aha moments. So, um, you know, probably five or six years ago, as I was healing through, still healing through the process of, of losing my first husband, I attended a Tony Robbins event. It's called Date with Destiny. And I would say if you've um, ever looked into that, if you have any interest in that at all, it is truly a life-changing experience. And so um, during this process, I discovered a lot of things about myself that probably everybody else saw, but I never saw. And um, I will say that growing up, I really did not like to be embarrassed. And so as I got older, 
even though, you know, being an Arizona Cardinals cheerleader, I was an NFL cheerleader, I put myself out there in that way in this like big group environment, dancing, doing that type of a thing. That didn't feel like that was hard to me, but talking on stage, doing things like this, um, so many other things I started to shy away from or I'd be so nervous to do that it would stop me from doing it because I, I it was this fear of embarrassment, this fear of vulnerability. And... Um, and during this this moment at Tony Robbins, it came to me that if I put myself in this vulnerable vulnerable moment, I was actually being the bravest I could possibly be. And I always looked at myself and I would say, you know, I want to be brave. I want to have courage. That's really important to me. But yet being vulnerable would stop me. And so once I shifted my mindset to say, if I do this thing, if I do this podcast, if I get up on that stage, if I develop this e-course, if I film myself, if I do these things that typically I would, would, would say no to, I am being brave. And the second I shifted that in my mind, the second so many doors opened to me and I started to do things that I never thought I would do before. And so that was one of my biggest aha moments in life. Another really great aha moment came to me in that as I look through all the things that I wanted to do, and it might be like a list of business things. Let's start there. So it might be, you know, hey, I've got to develop this new website. I've got to finish my taxes for the year. I need to hire someone. I've got to onboard this new team member. You know, oh my God, my social media, I'm so far behind. I'm really not very good at social media. You know, it might be, you know, a million little things that we have on our to-do list for business and not even looking at our personal list, just looking at that business list. There were often times I would look at it and I would say, okay, I got this, this, and this done. And typically those were things that I thought I was really good at that were going to be easy. Again, I, I, you know, looking at the things that I was comfortable doing goes back into that vulnerability, doesn't it? Um, And the things that I looked at on my list and at the moment didn't realize why, but there were things that I was procrastinating. And I looked at those lists of, of items I would often procrastinate and turns out those things were the things I thought I was gonna fail at. Maybe I had no experience in doing. Maybe I wasn't exactly sure where to start. You know, these could be things in your personal life. This could be weight loss. This could be eating right. This could be dropping out the alcohol, adding in more water. This could be things like spending more time with your family, being silly with your family. You know, it could be anything in your life. Like, what are you procrastinating? What's on your list that you're constantly never achieving or doing or moving towards? And this is my aha. I realized that the procrastination things were the things I thought I was going to fail at. And that rocked my world. I thought, oh my gosh, if I am procrastinating that just because I'm fearful of failure, I'm not going to do that anymore. You know, I'm going to look at those things and I'm going to kick them in the butt and I'm going to go for it. And so that was a big aha moment for me. And it also got me to do a lot of things that I had, that I had um, pushed aside. And I'm going to get into how to do that here in a minute. And my third one, I'm not going to spend too much more time on this, you guys, today. But my third aha moment in the last little bit was this feeling, actually, this is recent. Recently, I was listening to another podcast, a big podcast fan, and it was a podcast on the words that we say to ourselves that we get stuck on. So maybe it's like, oh, I'm stressed or, oh, I'm sad or, oh, I'm angry or, oh, I'm frustrated. And one typically that I have used is I'm overwhelmed. You know, I'm, I'm overwhelmed in that like there's all these things to do, not only at work, but it's my home life. It's, of course, my relationship with my spouse, my relationship with my kids. It's planning the birthday parties. It's making sure that that I'm managing the, the coach. Well, I was the soccer coach. I've actually passed that on now, but you know, getting him to soccer, putting him in piano, you know, making sure my 21 year old's having a great time at KU, you know, all of these things. And what about me? What about my fitness? What about like, I would love to really keep developing that love of dance, the love of music, you know, all of these personal things as well. And so I would often find myself in a state of overwhelmed, like, oh my God, I'm overwhelmed. And then I typically feel stressed and that stress like comes off. And of course, Everyone around me, I'm sure, is feeling that. And so I was listening to this podcast and it was like, take those words and shift them, turn them into something else. And and so the overwhelm to me became in demand. Instead of feeling overwhelmed, I'm in demand. I love that. I'm in demand. I've got lots of things to do. I've got lots of people that, that need me. And that makes a total shift in my mind. And so 
So sitting back and looking at those words, those those things that you say to yourself often and shifting those from the stressful, frustrated, um, overwhelmed place to a more happy, in-demand place, um, I'm hoping will help you as you're looking towards your 2024 goals. Um, so going into kind of looking at that like overwhelmed procrastination list, I stopped to think, all right, so here's here's my list. Here's the things that I really want to get done. Let's say it's I want to start working out. Okay. And, um, and so this is on my list of 2024 and I want to launch a new e-course and I want to, you know, actually I have a full list I'm going to share with you in a minute, but whatever your list is, your 2024 goals and lists, it's looking at those and I would say, write them down. I'm sure you already have, but if you haven't, write them down. And instead of looking at that full list of things, like let's say I'd mentioned earlier, you're going to do social media, you've got the IRS, you've got your website, you want to launch e-commerce, you've got to hire someone, which means, you know, maybe three to nine months of onboarding. You want to, you need to let somebody go, which is always the most difficult thing. Let's take that and let's look at the top two to three things and specifically the ones that you've been procrastinating. And let's look at those and decide, you know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that now. Instead of like, I'm going to do that in a week or I'm going to do that tomorrow, I'm going to do it now. And I think the thing that gets me going is making one step, not the final piece, but the one step that gets it moving. The one text to set the meeting, the one call to that personal trainer that sets that first training session up and not leaving that first training session without booking that next training session. But this all this all relates to business as well. Book the meeting to start the hiring process. Book the meeting to let that person go. Book the meeting to look at buying that laser. It doesn't mean you have to do it that day. Book the meeting to book the training to make sure, of course, I'm the training facility, so you know I like this one, um, to make sure that your staff is confident and can to execute those treatments. Um, you know, book that meeting, what, whatever it may be. So send the text, send the email, make the call. Just do that one step and you will be shocked when you look back in six months how far you got. So I'm I'm also reading right now the Atomic Hab- Habits, and it's so funny. I've I've shared some of this for so many years, and I, I shared this conversation about Tom Brady. I've heard so many times, and now I'm reading Atomic Habits, which um, you know is all about what I'm talking about here, and talks about it so much more eloquently and puts together a plan for you. So if this something is something you're interested in, check out the book Atomic Habits. found the perfect trio, virtual, quick, and free. Mint is hosting one-hour clinical trainings for eCourse subscribers on the first Tuesday of each month at 2.30 p.m. Central Time. We will be covering clinical topics like Sculptra, Genius, BBL, and Hydrofacial. Check out the link below in our show notes to learn more. Hi, all. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. We are always looking for feedback to make it better, so be sure to give us your feedback at the link in the show notes. If you're loving the podcast, we would really appreciate it if you would share it with a friend, rate us five stars, and write a review. This really helps other clinics and industry professionals find our podcast. Thanks. Now let's get back to the episode. So as as I'm going to sleep last night, or actually putting my son in bed and getting him ready for bed, we're kind of talking through our day. And... And telling him about this conversation I had with with Jay Burns, Dr. Burns, and um, just sharing with him, you know, oh, we were talking about culture and our business and and how I can do better this year. And and my eight year old stops and says, "Well, Mom, what is the weakest part of your business?" And I seriously stopped and I thought, I had to think about that. You know, what is the weakest part of my business? And he said, you know, if you can change that, you should be able to grow. And I was like, well, yeah, I should. (laughs) So this morning I got up and I was thinking about the weakest parts of my business. And I thought, you know, what a simple way. What a, you know, how smart are our kids that they can simplify things for us. And maybe sometimes I just need to simplify the things for myself to make them a little bit easier. I think I tend to overcomplicate things. Um, as my husband and business partner likes to, to tell me as he is like the simple, which is such a great reminder to me, I tend to overcomplicate. So it's nice just to say, sit back and say, you know what, book that meeting, get moving forward and everything is going to be okay. Um, 
So I love that. You know, I would just say, if you're thinking about this this morning, you know, don't be afraid of your aha moments. Those ones that can be so insightful are oftentimes painful in the beginning. Um, you know, take that step and make the movement. So let's move on to what I was really going to dive in today, which is 2024 mint. Here we go. So mint aesthetics. We started back in 1997. Matt started um, ACG Aesthetic Consulting Group in 1997 here in Kansas City, where he was distributing lasers and eventually started training with those because he found that obviously many of those clinics that bought the lasers need additional training. I started in this industry in January of 2000 as a sales rep for a skincare company called Fidomer, a French line, which, you know, back then I was a any bit, I was just so young. And honestly, I think if I would have known what I was going to interview for at that time, I wouldn't have gone to the interview. So talking about sliding door moments, you know, getting on the train or getting off the train, I'm so glad I got on that train because it really set me up for my future and where I am today. Um, I met a woman that worked for this company, Fidomare, in a class I was taking at the time. And she said, you know, hey, we're hiring. We're hiring for this, this national trainer position for this skincare company. And um, by the way, at this time, I didn't know what an esthetician was. So there you go. And um, I said, oh, hey, you know, you know, at the time I was working at the Estee Lauder counter through college. And I said, okay, well, I'll come in. That sounds great to me. So I went into this interview. And remember, there was, there was really no hardly any internet at the time i definitely didn't take in a laptop or anything um and so um to prepare for the meeting i of course looked at the line you know tried to get as much information as i could i knew that i was interviewing for a teacher position and so i developed this kind of i was going to teach them a concept which was the skincare of estee lauder and then i had brought in this poster board with um, kind of like a Jeopardy game on it. And I brought prizes to give the winner. Okay. So guess who was in my, my um, interview, the president of the company, the director of education and the director of sales. I met with all of them individually. And then I met with them together to do my teaching moment. And um, at the end of the day, they said, you know what, we absolutely love you, but you're not even an esthetician. And I was thinking to myself, I don't even know how to spell esthetician. But anyway, um, you know, you're not even an esthetician and it would take us, you need to go to aesthetics school, which will take a year. And then you'll need to work in our in our clinic, our day spa that they had also at the time that was attached to um, the distributorship for Fitomer, Fitocian, and V. And, um, and you would need to learn how to do all of these treatments before you could go and teach. And I thought, well, that makes sense. I, I can understand where you're coming from. Um, but they said, but we love your personality. We love how you, you know, what you brought, how prepared you were today. We're going to launch a new skincare line in the U.S. It's called Fito Cien, and we'd like you to come on board and take on six states. And I said, okay, I'm in. And so that launched my career into this industry. I stayed with them, eventually taking on Fito Mer and V and um, moving to Arizona, Scottsdale, where I worked in this industry for about 15 years before moving to Kansas City. So that turned into medical device cells that turned into launching a laser rental company when the economy crashed in 2008, 2009, launched into a laser training facility that the laws changed in Arizona and required every esthetician to take a um, course in laser physics and safety and all of the technology that your procedures that you were going to be offering. And so I developed the first state approved um, program along with a business partner. And I taught that program for a number of years, um, worked in a clinic alongside that laser training facility. And so I've had the rare opportunity to work in so many aspects of this industry. Um, met someone along the way that lived in Kansas City, had developed aesthetic hair starting in two, uh, 2001, you know, after had already developed the ACG company. And so um, we dated between Kansas City and Scottsdale and I, we got married. I moved to Kansas City and here we are. We joined our companies, Mint Aesthetic and ACG, and that was the birth of Mint Aesthetics in the Kansas City area. So, you know, we've both been in business for a number of years, came together in 2015 and have been together ever since building this this beautiful, beautiful company, working with these amazing people. So I've had the rare opportunity to live my dreams and um, to live this beautiful, beautiful life. And so I'm forever grateful 
for the sliding door of meeting, you know, Matt at that moment. And, um, you know, you'd think I'd be upset about leaving sunny Arizona, but um, I couldn't be more grateful for Kansas City and my beautiful life that I have here, the team that I get to work with every day. And, um, and so I will tell you, you think about going through hard moments in life. I don't know, I'm getting a little emotional. Um, hard moments in life and, and understanding that even though in that moment it might be so hard, there's so much beauty that can be found on the other side. And so I am grateful to be living in that beauty every day. Not that there's not hard moments, but there, there's when you can truly enjoy the moments, you find the beauty in them. And um, there's, there's so much to find throughout this life. So could not be more grateful for the moment that I have right now. All right, so 2024 for Mint. We've got so many amazing things coming your way. Um, you know, I think number one, my number one goal again is to create an environment my team loves. And I will say I've never had a more amazing team than we have here at Mint Aesthetics. Many of you have gotten to work with them. If you haven't, I hope you do soon. Um, we have uh, Ben Thompson, who's our sales manager, probably have spoken with him quite a bit as he onboards you in to the e-courses or brings you on into the Mint family, whether it's face-to-face -face training, it's our group training, our virtual trainings, or our online trainings. Claire Wolf, who's been with us the longest here at Mint Aesthetics, and I will say she is the heart and soul to Mint. She is an amazing person that once you once Ben has introduced you to the family, she'll bring you on and help you along your journey with us, um, making sure that your team has access to the e-courses, can track their own progress, and all the things I'm going to go through here in a minute with the changes that we've brought that make it even easier for your team um, and for you to see what's going on within that onboarding and continual training program. And so we also have Tori, who's going to be our marketing manager and who's developing this amazing program to introduce you to Mint Aesthetics. She is full of energy and she's really done such an amazing job as we've shifted onto the new website and developing a program to bring our passion to all of you. Um, we also have Rebecca who's come on more recently, actually in the past year and a half, and who's a full-time clinical trainer here at Mint Aesthetics. You know, we have a lot of amazing trainers that work with us between Aesthetic Care and Mint Aesthetics. We have Meredith and Laura and Ardeth and Jessica and Noreen, you know, so many people, Sammy, Chrissy, that will work with you as they bring their specialty out to all of you as our Mint family. Um, and then we also have Macy, who's going to be um, doing a lot with us with social media, supporting our marketing team, supporting me and my journey with all of you, kind of a Mint aesthetic support team person. And so really our team's grown here. And I think, you know, just again, my main focus is to help them in their journey and finding their passion in life. And then also taking what our, our dream is and to, to share it with all of you. So Mint Aesthetics, we've got a little, gr a lot of great things coming your way this year. So even more e-courses, you know, we have over 170 hours of content over hundred or sorry, 600 and 70 resources. So all of the documents, everything you need to start your business, to maintain your business, to grow your business, all of those things are found in the Mint eCourses. Um, we wanna bring even more value to you. So as subscribers, we're doing the first Tuesday of every month, we're doing live Tuesday trainings where you can ask all of your questions and get your answers during that, that hour. And there are different focuses. So we've already done one on treating Fitzpatrick fours, fives, and sixes. We've used BBL and Moxie on Fitzpatrick fours and fives. Um, and of course, Moxie would be treating Fitzpatrick fours, fives, and sixes. Um, we just did the February Tuesday training, which was focused on the body. So cool sculpting, M sculpt, soft wave, and genius, microneedling RF, how to combine those technologies to get the best results for volume reduction, building muscle, skin tightening, and also how that has changed with all of the weight loss medications that are out there and how we can use those in combination with wellness programs or weight loss as well. So those are some fun things, you know, more value. That's our focus this year. We've built out a new website to support you and your team. So now your team can track their own progress. They can take quizzes, print certificates, so they can manage their own book, their own resume, I guess I should say, as well as as owners, you can see, okay, I've got this new, this new team member coming on. I want you to take the BBL course. I want you to take the consultation course. I want you to take the front desk course. And they'll be able to track their progress, but you'll be able to track their progress and see how they're doing within the courses as well. So really, really excited about the new website. That's going to continue to grow and to change this 
this year as we update it and make it even better as we get feedback from our users. So, so many great things. Again, we've got e-courses that are already filmed. They're built out for the entire year of 2024. So new content coming your way with our amazing team members like Dr. Jay Burns. Um, Blake, who is one of our nurse practitioners at Aestheticare, has done some amazing courses for you. So those are coming your way. Things like how to chart. So if you're new to the medical part of aesthetics, maybe you've been an esthetician in a day spa, but you've never worked in the medical side, you'll you'll be able to learn through the e-courses how to chart and then work with your medical director to see what um, specifics you need for your clinic. So Again, a lot of great things coming your way. Of course, we're going to be doing more podcasts, bringing amazing people to you, other industry leaders. We're going to be talking to um, industry specialists, not just those that run med spas, but also those that run some of the companies, just to give you their point of view um, and how the industry is doing, moving and shaping. But I think some of my all-time favorites are working with other clinic owners so that you can hear their success stories, hear how they got started and how they got through some of their challenges, because again, we're all going to have them. It's just how we're going to conquer them. So um, I, as, as I finish up this podcast for today, you know, I want you to know that our passion, our focus is to build an online product that inspires growth, relieves your fears, and helps you to thrive. And that's truly um, one of our passions and goals here at Mint Aesthetics. So find your, find your journal today, write down your goals, take that next step. And, and um, I really hope you find some joy in that. So as I finish up today, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for sharing your time and your space with me and your heart um, and for, for listening to me as I share mine. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of the making of a multi-million dollar med spa podcast. I'm Kat Toronto, and it's been an absolute joy to be part of your journey. Until next time, let your passion lead the way. See you soon.